in-depth discussion on Proposition 42. Uh, well, this was a public hearing, and that took up the bulk of the morning. That's why we had such a late council meeting. It was, uh, but it was important. Uh, this changes the, the look and feel of the city going forward. What was exciting to me today, even though it was a very long public hearing, we're all on the same page. There's some people would like a few little tweaks, but we can pass it the way it is. Uh, we may we may make some tweaks to it if we can make sure that everybody stays comfortable with them, but uh, we have an ordinance that uh, will move forward. It's taken a long time to get here. They, they were talking about it taking six years. It, it started in the past administration and it shelved. Uh, we picked it up about two years ago, a little less than two years ago, and uh, just restarted the clock, started the process over again, and we're about to drive it home. It sounds like the one area that there's a lot of discussion on today is kind of the phase-in process of uh, applying the rules to tracks of an acre margin and eventually to all. Uh, you you describe that as a, a mistake the way it's written now, but that that's the that was the that was the compromise. So no 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 I, I didn't just, well I personally don't don't believe we should do that, but. It's in the agenda. I mean, I am part of the compromise. I gave up some things that I uh, had concerns about. And uh, we have a Chapter 42 in the Code of Ordinances, or put in the Code of Ordinances that uh, the neighborhood support, the builders can support, the council members can support. Again, there's some minor tweaks that came up today, and we may be able to get those done, but uh, we're going to load it up for the first time next Wednesday. It'll probably be put off for, for a week, but. Uh, we can pass it. What, what are the, I mean, I guess I, I mentioned the phase in, what are the other small tweaks that you've heard of it that you think? The, the phase in, the phase in was something that I committed to the neighborhoods and it is in the ordinance. But what, the, what I heard the builders asking for was, well, if you're going to use this phase in, could we shrink the size of uh, the lot that triggers the phase in? And it was a reasonable request. There's no magic about an acre. And and it was clear, and it has been clear all along, that the, what the neighborhoods are concerned about is so-called blockbusting, where you buy up a couple of properties and put something in that causes a domino effect for the neighborhood. We can protect neighborhoods from blockbusting at a lower level than an acre, and that will offer, offer more development opportunities as well. So, but again, we have a, a carefully crafted compromise. I don't want to do anything that would unravel that. But uh, it's worth having the conversation. Speaking of track sizes and things like that, something that, that um, everybody keeps talking about is the likelihood of redevelopment of blighted tracks with uh, you know, shopping centers, apartments, warehouses, that sort of thing. These rules would encourage that outside of the um, but as most of the builders said, you know, a lot of them don't really work in tracks larger than an acre. And uh, the HCAD data... That's the data, phasing. That's, I mean, that, that's the whole crux of the phasing. Right. Well, but, but the, the HCAD data shows that the vast majority of apartments and warehouses, and even a lot of the retail and commercial, is larger than an acre. So what, is the redevelopment argument really a strong one, given the, the numbers and the fact that the builders are saying they don't work that big? The, the big guys are going to be fine no matter what we do. The big guys can go in and redevelop these large tracks today. What Chapter 42 does is allow one more option for these large tracks that may allow us to have more available housing and a better price range for our workforce. It also allows the, the redevelopment of the smaller tracks at more density. The, the only sticking point right now, and again, this is a, this is a carefully crafted compromise, is at, at what size of redevelopment lot do you inadvertently trigger the issue of, of block busting? I believe that we can get down below an acre. Uh, there were a, uh, a couple of the council members mentioned uh, uh, 15,000 square feet, which would be about three lots. Uh, makes sense. We'll see. We'll see where that where that goes. But again, we have a, we have a perfectly fine ordinance that has plenty of support around council that uh, everybody is 
on the outside has reluctantly agreed to, so that's where we're going first. In regards to... Just, just one, one, one quick follow-up. Independent of the phase-in, the, the idea of redevelopment is a key argument behind making the, the changes. Correct. But the data shows that many of the properties that people talk about redeveloping, retail, warehouses, apartment complexes, the vast majority of, of some of those categories are larger than one acre. So right. even if the phase-in doesn't happen, you have home builders who are saying, you know, I can't work that big anyway. Which right. I, and if, I, I, you know, I don't know. We're talking past each other. The phase-in is specifically for the, the smaller lots. And it, it, um, the, the way the phase-in is structured and it's done deliberately, it, the idea is to open up these big lots as quickly as, the big tracks as quickly as possible and to slow down the development of the smaller tracks, which is what discourages the smaller developers. And, and that's why I said, you know, the, 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 unfortunately, the big guys are going to be fine anyway. This give the, gives the big guys a little more flexibility. The smaller developers, it takes longer for them to have that same flexibility, and that was part of the compromise with the neighborhood. Because they do tend to work in smaller areas, they are more prone to go into neighborhoods and buy up individual lots. So, so when people are talking about redevelopment of these blighted tracks, the fact that only a few large builders can actually handle that size of a project, that's that's part of the that's part of the logic. I mean, that's been a key argument throughout, but only a few people. I, 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 some, you know, it's been a long day. I do not understand your question. You've now asked me four times, and, I, and I'm trying to answer it. Everybody wants these large tracks to be redeveloped. We don't think that there's anything in what we're doing with Chapter 42 that will slow down the redevelopment of these large tracks. We actually think it may improve the redevelopment of some of these large tracks because it will allow greater density and greater flexibility. So you can actually do more things with your large track. But these large tracks are being developed today. And there's a very, there's a one year phase in period before you can go out and develop these large tracks at more density. Some of these large tracks will go ahead and be developed. In, in regards to the uh, so-called dumpster diving ordinance that I probably never could have it's imagined. not a dumpster diving ordinance. <laughs> well, There's nothing to do with dumpsters. So, so called. Uh, and it's not a homeless ordinance, which is why I, I just infuriates me when they, when they talk about that. Yeah, uh, media labels. Uh, did you ever imagine that you'd be spending a lot of time trying to define a public garbage can? No, and, and I, I, I share the frustration of the city attorney who couldn't figure out why council members couldn't figure out what a public trash can is. If it's in a place accessible to the public where random people can come up and dump their trash in it, it's a public trash receptacle. Now, they seem to feel, the council members seem to feel that they need a specific definition of that. This is how we get into these ordinances in the first place. Um, I don't understand why it was passed in 1942. I don't understand why it was amended and kept. I think it's been amended two more times since then. Uh, it's it, if it's in a if it's in a trash can, I have discarded it. I still can't litter uh, and and do things that that you know tear up the trash can or mess up the area. Are we such a consumer-driven society that we say if you know if I'm throwing it away, no one else can have it? If I'm throwing an aluminum can in a trash can, no one should be able to go pull it out and, and recycle it. That, that's just nuts to me. And we, we have very carefully, I think we ought to repeal the whole ordinance, but we have very carefully pointed out that your trash in the black bin that the city provides you is not a public trash receptacle. Maybe in a public place, but it is not a public trash receptacle. A public trash receptacle is in a, a place where people congregate, it has an open top, you throw things in. It's clearly, you know, it's a common sense definition. And, you know, maybe the problem is we have five, five uh, attorneys uh, on council and they all wanted to get to, you know, pin the legal issues down. They spent way, way more time on this than they, they should. But sometimes uh, the, the little things, uh, particularly after a long day at the council table, uh, sidetrack other issues. Uh, Are you uh, personally pleased with uh, the, the charges being dismissed against Mr. Gallon? I am pleased. I, I, 
we have littering ordinances for a reason. If you rummage through a trash can, throw things down on the ground, don't pick it up, uh, you ought to be silent. If, um, you know, you are in a, trying to go into a, uh, you know, a dumpster behind a building that's on, you know, clearly on private property and, got a, and has a fence around it, I don't think you belong there. But I also do not agree with the argument. A lot of people are saying, well, we're, we, want, we ought to do this to make it easier for the homeless to, to scavenge for food. I frankly don't think the homeless should be scavenging a trash can for food in the richest country in the history of the world. That's insane. Yeah. And for, you know, some of the argument up here was kind of drifted in, in that direction. Well, people leave food in trash cans. And in fact, the, the gentleman who was cited, there were a lot of people who came to council and said, well, people are known to leave food in trash cans for the homeless. Really? I don't treat my dog that way. Okay. I feed my dog. If we want to feed the homeless, there are ways to feed the homeless. And so this should be about something simple. Is this, is this an area that we ought to be regulating? Is it a rule that makes sense? And uh, you could say that, it, well, it's very rarely enforced, but it was enforced recently, and uh, it shouldn't have been. So let's just get rid of something that doesn't make sense. Mayor, um, going back to um, Proposition 42, uh, you said it's OK that it's going to have a chilling effect on small builders, and um, I would, that chilling uh, effect will stop development of small builders mm -hmm. from doing what it is that they do on a regular basis. What we pass in Chapter 42 <coughs> will not impact what happens inside the loop. Developments that are happening inside the loop will still happen inside the loop. All we're doing is taking Chapter 42 from 610 out to the city limits, and they're not, these, it's not going to impose any burdens on these developers that they don't have today. The smaller lots, it'll take two years to get there instead of one year but it's not a, a imposing a burden. It's saying, you get to have the candy, but you have to wait a little bit longer. It's not taking away anything they have. But the smaller developers can't afford that two-year break in between. Uh, well, <coughs> again, it was a compromise. I, I don't agree with it, and I'm clear about that. I'm not trying to fool anybody, but that's what we do is we craft compromises that make sure that everybody gets a piece of what they want. So there is a the chance for that to change. So. Anything is possible at the council table. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will not be here next week. Uh, when it first comes up, I assume it will be tagged. But uh, anything is possible. Okay, anything briefly, possible? Um, uh, yeah, I've been asked to do a, a five-part series on called a positive takeaway on the Houston job support. As you know, the national report was was uh, weak. Um, just could you comment briefly uh, once more about why Houston's uh, job situation is uh, better than elsewhere? We have the hottest local economy in the United States. It's a wonderful situation to be in. Part of that is deliberate business-friendly policies, active recruitment of businesses to relocate in Houston and, and providing the services to make sure they do, and the underlying strength of the, the major sectors here. That combination of things is what has sustained the Houston economy. Thank you very much.